Okay, hi! I'm Cherry and you've stumbled upon my channel and today I'm going to be giving you recommendations for fiction books about eating disorders. It is once again Eating Disorders Awareness Week. Like I said in my previous video, there are like three consecutive Eating Disorders Awareness Weeks and this is the third one. According to the National Eating Disorders Association, 70 million people all over the globe live with eating disorders. In America, at least half of the population knows someone with an eating disorder. You can try to turn a blind eye, but eating disorders are prevalent. And that's why I'm glad that we have multiple weeks to bring awareness about something that should be brought to light all year round, especially considering eating disorders are mental disorders with the highest death rates. I should have talked about this in my previous video, considering we were talking about non-fiction reads, but I feel compelled to share these stats with you regardless. If you want to know the brief history of my own battle with anorexia, you can check out my previous video discussing non-fiction reads about eating disorders, but for now, let us get on to some amazing books that tackle eating disorders in fiction. Let's start with the most popular book about eating disorders, especially in the ED community, and that's Winter Girls by Laurie Hells Anderson. When I was still part of the online ED community years and years and years ago, I was still a teen and this was the most recommended and also the most accessible book about EDs. We didn't really have much rep in fiction during that time so we all pretty much just adored this book and I honestly still do. It's the very first book I ever reread and even as an adult, I adore it. In Winter Girls, we follow Leah after the death of her best friend, Cassie. Cassie died from her eating disorder in such a horrific and painful but very realistic way. Leah as well suffers from an eating disorder and when Cassie was still alive, they were pretty much competitors in this deadly contest. Leah is distraught at losing her best friend and is overcome with guilt of not being able to save her. This book has additional trigger warnings for depression, self-harm, family issues, grief, and loss of a loved one. Winter Girls explores Leah's very bumpy path to recovery, her realizations after losing her best friend to an awful illness, and her desperate attempts at holding on to hope during tragic times. I would just like to note that the writing style of this book might not work for everyone. While it did work for a majority of the readers I know, including me personally, I saw some reviews that they didn't care much for the writing style because it makes use of strikethroughs and italics in a sense that makes it look like it's prose poetry. They weren't also aware that the chapters on top of the pages alluded to the main character's weight at the time. Personally, I adore the writing style of this book. It's poetic, lyrical, without being difficult to read, and parts of the book do focus on emotional symbolisms. But most importantly, the portrayal of eating disorders is scarily accurate, including the bitterness and inner turmoils of someone suffering from an ED, especially in knowing that this isn't an own voices novel, as far as I know. Winter Girls is probably part of the ED starter pack, and everyone in the community and their mothers have probably already read it, but I cannot recommend this enough to anyone who wants a heart-wrenching and emotional read with a hopeful conclusion. The next book on this list is one that I pretty much flew through and that's Paperweight by Meg Haston. In this, we follow Stevie, a 17 year old who felt like she was trapped in her life. And now, she's trapped in an eating disorder treatment center in buttfuck middle of nowhere. <laughs> Basically, her stay at the treatment center is a nightmare and her dad signed her up for 60 days of treatment. What they don't know is that Stevie doesn't plan to stay that long. In 27 days, on the anniversary of her brother's death, a death she is convinced she caused, she's intent on taking her own life. So obviously, additional trigger warnings for depression and suicidal ideation, which is an ongoing theme for most of the book, and I think also self-harm. Paperweight was an emotional roller coaster, for real. It's a relatively short read, but packs a very strong punch. It portrays perfectly the sort of elitism that the eating disorder community has when it comes to getting the 
official diagnosis of anorexia and bulimia. Also, I think Evie's therapist was a bit of a hippie, <laughs> which was very interesting to see amidst the usual polar opposites of uptight, no-nonsense ones and ones that are too friendly and overly positive. Evie's therapist invites her to ride horses around the grounds. There's weird mentions of chakra and also the incorporation of holistic healing or something like that. Which shows that every therapist does have their own way of teaching us how to cope and that not all therapists are perfect fit but funny enough, sometimes the weirdest exercises and coping mechanisms are the ones that can actually work for us. Overall, Paperweight was a very interesting and unique reading experience. The next book is a personal favorite of mine and it's What I Lost by Alexandra Bollard. Elizabeth has lost so much to get to where she was, but at least she's finally a size zero. But she's also a new resident at an eating disorder treatment center. Elizabeth plans to injure treatment, get released, then go back to restricting again. Throughout the story, we are introduced to Elizabeth's mom, who also suffers from untreated disorder eating and her own size zero obsession. Elizabeth thinks her mom needs treatment just as much as she does. But during Elizabeth's stay at the treatment center, she starts receiving anonymous packages. Are they from her ex-boyfriend, a secret admirer, or someone playing an awful prank? Personally, this book is one of the most relatable things I've read. It accurately portrays the ache of wanting to eat and the obsessive calorie counting, the realization that we fuck up our bodies to the point of being unable to medically fix it. But this book also shows that people with eating disorders are still very human and that we have or had lives before the disorder took over, before we got sick. I loved reading about the other characters' struggles and realizations. Their suffering and experiences all seemed very genuine. Multiple times, they also mentioned force-feeding patients ensure when they refuse to touch the food on their plate. And honestly, I got flashbacks because I also had to take ensure when I was at my lowest weight. <laughs> Just a quick story. I posted a very short review of this book on Goodreads, giving it 5 stars and saying it made me want to actively pursue recovery. Then the author personally sent me a private message to tell me a brief summary of her own story, saying recovery was the best decision she's ever made and she wanted to wish me luck on my own recovery. I think that was just the sweetest thing, like templated or not. I think authors who connect with their audience, especially to ones that their stories touch, it can become extra motivation for people like us and something we can come back to every now and then during some of our most difficult days. I don't know. Just thought I'd share this story. I thought I was I was extremely touched when I received that message. Surprised, but very, very touched. The final book. I have for you is my most recent read about eating disorders and that's Letting Anna Go by Beatrice Sparks, otherwise known as Anonymous. Beatrice Sparks is popular for her Anonymous series that shows the stories of teenagers suffering from addiction, which eventually leads to their downfall. And these stories are chronicled via diary entries. Letting Anna Go is her book with the highest ratings. The rest are apparently hot trash, but I might still read them because I am a fucking rodent. <laughs> I love garbage. Anyway, Letting Anna Go is about a girl who remains unnamed the entire time. She's healthy, an athlete, and basically lives a pretty good life. Below the surface, however, she feels like she could never be good enough. As her life begins to spiral out of control, she realizes she could still control one thing and that is how much she ate. Her spiral into this obsessive world of eating disorders begins when her best friend, who's an overly ambitious ballerina intent on getting the lead role for the Nutcracker, invites her to join her on a diet. Honestly, do not do that. That is a very dangerous game to play. 
because there are literally no winners in the end. Take note, however, that this book starts out relatively slow, which moving forward makes a lot of sense because eating disorders don't just happen overnight. While most books about EDs start out right smack in the height of the disorder, this book starts at the very beginning, before she even had any predominantly disordered thoughts. She also relapses multiple times throughout the book. While I really did like this book, I won't recommend it to everyone. If you're in the right mental headspace for a story that can turn very dark corners, you can pick it up. I urge you to pick it up. It's a very realistic portrayal and honestly one of the most realistic fictional stories about EDs that I've read so far. And those are some of my personal favorite fiction books about eating disorders. Of course, I'll be reading more books about the subject, hopefully find more diverse stories from authors of different backgrounds so that I can come back and recommend better books in the future. I've already got a few lined up on my TBR that I'm super excited to pick up. So with that, I do hope more diverse authors also write books because it is also prevalent in other races and ethnicities even though the subject is very taboo especially to the point of ignorance in many parts of the world especially in Asia. Eating disorders also affect more than just teenagers and young adults. Globally, 13% of women above 50 years old show symptoms of disordered eating. I hope authors also write about other eating disorders because there are more to EDs than just anorexia and bulimia, like binge eating disorder, ARFID and ADNOS to name a few. But that is all I have for you today. Hopefully the next time I come back with more diverse and more inclusive books. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it or at least found something useful in this video and I will see you in my next one. Goodbye!